Hi. Okay, here's the story from Poppy today. Some of you wanted me to read it again, so I'm going to read it again. This is what happened today. When we left off last time, she was running through as fast as she could, and the talons of Mr. Okax were coming to get her. And he gave a hiss of satisfaction. Poppy cleared the rock crevice in one jump. Her landing, however, was awkward. Awkward, wonky, she probably splatted and it threw up a puff of dust. Swiftly, she scrambled back to her feet, and then she started to dash across the open area. Belly low, tail stiff as a nail, ears folded back. She pumped her legs like pistons. Mr. Okak, circling above, saw the dust caused by the mouse's jump, and the next moment, he spotted Poppy. In a flash, he calculated her speed and direction, and he was determining the exact spot where he could catch her. He made four quick, strong wing pumps, which brought him to the proper altitude. Good word, it's like up in the air. Then he dived. <sighs> Poppy streaked over the ground, and though she felt as if her heart would burst, she was almost halfway to the bush. Soon she would be passing the wood strip. Remember, that was her just in case plan. Mr. Okax, who had plummeted to a spot not far above and behind Poppy, threw out his wings pulled back his head, thrust his claws forward, and in anticipation, anticipation he's thinking about, he's hoping for it, anticipation of the meal he was about to eat. Ew. He clacked his beak. Poppy, hearing the clack, cast a lightning glance over her shoulder. Glance, glance, that's one of our words, glance. Mr. Okax was right behind her, his fearsome talons set. The shock of seeing the owl so close surged through her like a bolt of electricity. Zoop, zoop. With an enormous kick of her rear leg, she shot into the air, Zoop. tumbling head over heels until she came down belly flat at the far end, the length of the wood. The far end, so the wood was like over here and she like jumped all the way to that side. Poppy's leap caught Mr. Okax by surprise, and as he dived, Poppy took off, sensing he would miss her. Not, you know, he didn't get his target. He adjusted. Up came his claws, down went the left wing, over went the tail, and what Mr. Okax achieved, however, was careening, that's quite a word, careening, like falling, careening swerve, swerve, that brought him crashing beyond his target onto the same strip of wood as Poppy. But on the opposite end, he's on this end and he's on this end. Now something scientific happens. When Mr. Okax landed, his weight catapulted. It's a, it's a science thing. The weight, the weights were not the same. Little tiny mouse, big giant, ow. It's a catapult, catapulted. I lost my place. His weight catapulted the light as a feather mouse into the air in a great arc that dumped her with a splat right at the base of the bush. Frantic, she clawed forward and tumbled head over heels into the hole she'd been aiming for. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Mr. Okak swiveled his head this way, first this way, then that, searching for his prey. She seemed to have vanished. Frustrated, he flapped into the air and circled low over Bannock Hill, but found no trace. Seething the owl headed back to Dimwood. How dare this mouse, this poppy, escape twice? Never before had a mouse done that. Mr. Okax had half a mind to return to his watching tree and wait for the impudent creature to pop up. The next moment, he decided against it. He was tired. Daylight had finally arrived. It was long past his sleeping time. Besides, he had eaten something. But as Mr. Okak sailed deep into Dimwood toward his secret lair, he vowed to avenge himself. If mice began to get notions that they could escape him, there would be no end of trouble. Poppy lay in the hole beneath the bush, hurt from ears to tail. It took time for her breathing to become regular, longer still for her pulse to drop to normal. When she began to feel herself again, she tested her legs and her toes to see if it worked. Everything seemed to be intact. Cautiously, she crawled to the top of the hole and stole a quick peek. Though she saw no sign of Mr. Okax, she retreated hastily, still too agitated to do 